I'll wake up for a smile each day Positive for my mindset, don't oh, know Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way And I go dead there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Go dead there for one another But this is Johnny where we take Don't no say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you And I go that there for you, my sister You no need to shake We go that there for one another For this journey we did I go there for you You go there for me We are a family, always there for one another. Join us. D-Star, Raising Role Models. Hello and welcome to Daystar Christian Center. It is the home of stars and megastars. The Bible says, enter his gate with thanksgiving and to his court with praise. We are so glad to have you join us today. This is Daystar Christian Center. We say, we call it the home of stars and megastars. And when we say stars and megastars, we actually mean you and you and you. Well, today is the last Sunday in the month of March. We've been dealing with a series which is all about financial increase and it's been explosive all through today we are wrapping it up as the last sunday of course we still have wednesday but you know it's been an exciting start to the year which has been declared to us as the year of a much fruit season i don't just want to believe that you're already enjoying the much fruit season well if you join us across the world in if it's nigeria online you're joining us in nigeria and you're online you're joining us today i want to say thank you for being a part of this service and if you join us from across the world, we want to say thank you too for joining us. Whatever time it is over there, it is the right time that you're joining us for the second service. And first service was explosive, and I want to believe that second service will be much more explosive. Once again, my name is Tayo Adetunji, and today we want to continue in our series that is all about financial increase. Pass some you know, delivered some fantastic, very mind-blowing um, messages in the course of the first service. And I want to believe that, you know, in the um, course of the second service, as you're watching, um, some of these messages will hit you so hard and you really want to share with somebody. Just go online and share it on all social media platforms. It could be Twitter, it could be Instagram, it could be TikTok, it could be um, any other social media platform with the hashtag Daystar Online. Yes, um, wherever you're joining us from, want to say also welcome and just make it a very beautiful platform. Just enjoy the space with other people there. Share your experience in the course of the month. The month of March has been really, really, really great and I want to believe that you're beginning to enjoy the benefits of serving the Lord. Well, um, we're about to go in for the service but before we do that we just want to have a word of prayer to say um before the service goes on father we thank you we give you all the praise for this day we thank you because lord you're going to bless us from row to row from seat to seat from person to person from situation to situation father we thank you in jesus mighty name we pray well once again we want to say that welcome to daystar it is going to be a fantastic end to the month of march i want you to you know strap your seat belt because it's going to be a jolly ride if you're in the main auditorium here at the oregon center lagos we'd like you to get to your feet as we begin the service welcome somebody beside you to your right to your left to your front and to your back as we welcome the praise team to lead us into the service we'll be back after the service praise god praise god are you ready to praise god in a different style this morning come on oh, let's go Take your body. Come on. To the left, to the right. Come on. Hallelujah, Jehovah Jireh, you're so well. Come 
and join me sing hallelujah to you but Jerry has done me well come and join me come and join me come and join me come and join me tell somebody come and join me
soni a yiro e fufu lele ti mi ko kiji kiji so giri la giri ola giri ka 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 o ala benu an so si oyo kini ma fi so re oluwa right now that thing that is only him that can do it for you no man can do it for you hey that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Somebody, I just want you to just bless this God. You can pick any song in your dialect. You can choose to call him names in your dialect. I'm sure God is here. God will answer you. God will hear you. Let Yeah. Generations 
after generation. You know the song, just sing with me, say. Keep praising you, hey. yet no word sums you up. Then I ask the Lord, oh. God, what name God fits you, God? And God responded to me and he said, yeah. Generations, generations, after generations. Help me say generations. After generations. Keep praising you, Lord. Yet know what sums you up, oh. Then I ask the Lord, oh. Are you all a soggy like Rio? Generations, oh. after generations, we will keep praising you, Lord. Yet know what sums you up, oh. Then I ask the Lord, oh. be heard in heaven. You are Yahweh. And let pray get the door shall la plane kala balala dosh. Yeah, yeah, you are the Lord one. Yeah, the Holy One. You are Yahweh. Then I ask the Lord, what name fits you? Yeah. And he said, Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, we worship you, Emmanuel. We celebrate you who rides upon the heavens by your name, Yah. Can you lift your voice and just bless him? He rides upon the heavens. He sits upon the circles of the earth. Can you extol him? Scripture says, extol him who rides upon the heavens. Your name. Blessed be your name. In 
Jesus mighty name we have worshipped. In Jesus mighty name we have worshipped. Can you give him a big, big shout of praise? Hallelujah. Oh, glory. As our custom is, we shall be praying for our nation, Nigeria, and one other nation. Galatians 5 verse 1, New International Version says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. And do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Glory to God. Now we're going to pray that the freedom we have in Christ will be a reality in our nation. Is that okay? Listen, scripture says God hates oppression. In other words, any person plotting op oppression is coming in direct opposition to God's purpose. And it is our responsibility to enforce God's will. Hallelujah. Will you please open your mouth and declare that the freedom we have in Christ Jesus will be a reality in our nation. Let's destroy every yoke of slavery and schemes of oppression in our land. Father, we thank you because you have granted us freedom and we decree and declare that oppression will not reign in our land. Frustrate everyone plotting to cause oppression. Your word says you hate oppression. Oh God, by your power, let that freedom be a reality in the name of Jesus. Break the yoke of oppression. Though hand join in hand, the wicked will not go unpunished. So there, it doesn't matter the group that decides to come together to plot how to keep others under. By the power of God, we declare such plot is brought to nothing. This nation will experience real freedom. I mean the citizens will enjoy real freedom in the name of Jesus. No cabal will continue to hold down our economy or hold down our development because Jesus has made us free. We enjoy that freedom in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you pray for the nation of Mauritania? Or rather, yes, Mauritania and declare that the country of Mauritania will receive the word of God. The word of God will spread in that nation, affect their national culture, affect their national life, affect their economy. Open your mouth and pray for Mauritania. Father, move over the, the country of Mauritania and cause your word to so mightily grow. Uh, let your word grow and prevail. Let it overthrow hatred. Let it overthrow the wrong culture. Let it overthrow poverty. Let it bring development in the name of Jesus. Will you say a word over yourself this week and commit your ways to him as you go out. You are blessed as you come in. You are blessed. You are protected from every form of bloodshed or violence. God will give you ideas. You will be productive on your job in the name of Jesus. As God has said, it is much fruit season for us. We decree that we will enjoy much fruit. We will bear fruit in all we do in the name of Jesus on our job, in our business, in our homes, in our community. Let what we bring out bear fruit that is worthy of our calling. Thank you, eternal Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Lord, we are prayed together as a congregation. Hear us according to your word. And let the evidence be seen in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Will you put your hands together to the God that answers prayers? Can you raise a voice of shout to him again? He answers prayers. Hallelujah. Welcome to church this Sunday. Can you welcome the people online with you or the people sitting by you? Say welcome to service this Sunday. Hallelujah. All right. I want to say welcome to everyone in this service, whether you are in person or online. This is the Star Christian Center. We call it the home of stars and mega stars. And we have just one assignment from God that is summarizing our vision, which is to raise Role models. Role models are examples in the society. Role models are people with the character, competence, the capacity of Jesus Christ. How it works is that God touches us through his word, through the training system. He transforms our lives. There are visible changes. Others want to pattern after us. Jesus Christ 
He is our chief role model, and he is the one that we follow. He actually is the day star. Glory to God. So if it's your first time of being a part of us, we want you to know that our services holds every Sunday at our Ragoon Center here. Three services, 7 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m. All those are West African time zones. Please be a part of of it, you can convert it to whichever time zone from which you're uh, uh, operating or watching us. And on Wednesdays, our service is strictly online, 6 p.m. West African time. Uh, we have other centers that meet at separate times on Sunday. Uh, our centers meet at least two times on Sunday. Our other centers, during the course of the service, you see the address and the service time. Please pay attention from wherever you are logged onto this service. Uh, our services, are uh, on social media platforms and it's on our main platform live.dataing.org but we also stream online on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and on online radio dataing.org forward slash FM. Glory to God. And all these services are on demand online. In other words, afterwards, you can continue to, to be a part of the service. You can watch it all by yourself. Just go to our YouTube channel and you will see that we have Desta online community all across the nations. So wherever you are located in all the continents, please uh, go to our communication materials, you will see the details there. There is a small group you can join. And there is also the, the hybrid small groups all across the city of Lagos. You can join one. Please also check out our, our um, information center or simply go on our page and you will see the information. If it's your first time online, you're worshiping with Daystar for the very first time. We are excited to have you. Can you signify by raising your hand online? Put an emoticon. And I want all those online to welcome them. And all those in person, can you put your hands together for our guests online? All right, so please, there's a sign up button on our main platform, live.desang.org. Click it and leave us your details or simply check in the uh, chat room. There is a link there. We're excited to have you. Please keep coming and coming, and God will bless you. If you are in any of our halls physically and it's your first time at Desa, can you signify by a wave of hand my first time at Desa? You're right here. Can I see your hands? Yes, 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 thank you. Can you rise up on your feet? Just stand by your chair. You are not coming out. We just want to clap for you. We want to give you a welcome pack. Welcome, thank you. Let's greet them very well. Clap for them. You can shake them. If you are close by them, someone needs to give them a hug. All right, our officials are trying to give you a welcome pack. Once you receive it, you may please have your seat. All right, so um, as we continue in the service, any part of it, that benefits you, excites you, touches you, share it, use the hashtag Daystar Online so that others can be a part of it. And in case you are not in a church where you're seated and uh, where you're planted, serving and planted, you may consider making Daystar your home church. In fact, I want to advise you, appeal to you to consider making Daystar your home church and things will change for the better for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so let me just take a few announcements. The first one has to do with our Daystar Business Community, which is holding a prayer, DBC Praise, with Sam Adeyemi, with Dr. Sam Adeyemi on Thursday, 6th of April, 2023. 7 p.m. is virtual. Please register and be a part of it. The details should be on the screen. DBC Praise with Sam Adeyemi. The next event is... um. Parenting, put together by this school of parenting, and it's titled Parenting in Different Culture, Home or Abroad. The new date for the event is Saturday, 8 April, 11 a.m. You can find details for the event on our communication material. And then Daystar Leadership Academy, the module on personal success comes up tomorrow and uh, Tuesday, and the co uh, I mean, the courses to be taking success habit, family success, personal transformation, and personal health management. Please, the detail is also there. You can still register today. Some, I mean, it's hybrid, so you can either be here physically or online to take that course. And finally, our midweek service resumes physical meeting, in-person meeting. Every Wednesday in this place, 6 
p.m. Now, if you clap and you don't come, I will be looking out for you. Hallelujah. Please come and come with somebody. It's going to be exciting. Hallelujah. Let's just take this announcement. 21st February 2023 was sent in. Cain Day is the person testifying. Cain Day said, Our God is a faithful God. And what was the situation in 2022? Cain Day said, I trusted God for my for um the residency permit approval for my family and myself. And during Operation Push, I held on to the words government policies and systems of every country will work for me and my family that was a prayer point then it says also every cloud full of blessings will rain down on us she said i kept praying and declaring these words to the glory of god blessings came pouring down and government policies worked in our favor we got our the approval for our residency permit we are grateful and we cannot contain our joy he is indeed a faithful god and his words are reliable can you put your hands together now and celebrate god oh yes government policies and systems will work in your favor this week in the name of jesus it's time for the word of god will you please bow your head and speak to jesus this morning tell him lord i want you to answer me in this area send me a word that will give me a direction lord speak concerning my situation give me instructions this morning scripture says he sent his word and his word healed so if you have sickness in your body the word will heal it doesn't matter whether it's emotional sickness or it is physical sickness the power of god is in this place thank you eternal father lord let your word set the captive free give direction to someone we give you all the glory in jesus name we pray Put your hands together as we receive our senior pastor for the word. We call it the home of stars and mega stars for a reason. We have an assignment from God to raise role models, influencers, examples in the society. It is a God-given assignment. Listen, in the vision Christ has for you, he describes you as the salt of the earth the light of the world. Now those two things never leave the environment the same. That is how Christ sees you. Now cultivating that ability to influence other people, that takes skills. So we are heavy on training. We are heavy on leadership training. That's why it gives me great joy to invite you to our first module of the Daystar Leadership Academy this year. Actually, it's tomorrow, <laughs> Monday and Tuesday, and we have just a few hours for someone to jump in and join us. It's going to be hybrid. So some people are going to be present at our facility at Oregon Lagos. Others will be joining us online from all over the world. DLAonline.org, that's where to register right away. If you've been to the school, you know there's a reason why 45,000 people have passed through the school, right? Sponsor someone. <laughs> okay, actually literally pay for them. Drag someone in because it is life-changing. This module uh, for the next two days will be on self-leadership. It's personal transformation. Promises to be powerful. Okay, dlaonline.org. Don't procrastinate. Go there and register right away. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God loves us, right? He feels what we feel. He understands what we're going through. So right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm praying for that person whose heart is heavy. I prophesy by the Spirit of God that that spirit of heaviness lifts in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy peace into your emotions. I prophesy healing in the physical body for someone who needs it. The power that raised Christ from death engages your body now. In the name of Jesus, yes, healing in the cell, healing in your bones, healing in your bloodstream. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. Whatever is not supposed to be in your body that is there, we remove it in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is not there that should be there will receive it. 
through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, thank you, Heavenly Father. We receive healing. We receive healing now. Thank you, because Christ died on the cross, took all the pain on his body. We receive healing now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. It's like I have two, me two messages today, so let me get on with the first one quickly. It's about the elections. Elections are almost always emotional events. And in the last few weeks <laughs> in Nigeria, we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? So today, I'm not doing any major analysis on the elections. I just want to draw uh, attention to something. So I said we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, because there are some positive developments when you look closely in terms of the maturity, the growth of our democracy. On the other hand, we've also seen violence. We've seen violent communication. We've seen tribal wars, right? And because we have the phones now, they're there. The videos are there for us to see. I just want to call on us today. Please process everything you experience through the values of Jesus Christ. The cornerstone of those values is love. Process everything you experience through the values of Jesus Christ, okay? The beautiful thing is that cornerstone, love, is espoused by practically all religions. So even if you're not a Christian, <laughs> you're a human being, <laughs> you, you need to wake up your humanity and please put value on human life. Treat other people the way you would love to be treated. When we harbor prejudice, honestly, we become part of the problem. You, you are not going to solve a problem when you are biased, when you are prejudiced. Okay? And I want to say for us as Christians, we've got to live by, by the laws of God, by the dictates of the scriptures. And the summary is that love. If you don't remember what the Bible says in the heat of the moment, right? <laughs> Just ask yourself a question. What would Jesus do? Now, what you would do after that, what you would say after that, depends on the depth of your commitment to Christ. If he's not only your savior, but the Lord of your life, you would obey him in this instant. In that instant, you would obey him, right? Do what Jesus will do. In Matthew 5, 43 to 45, New Living Translation, he said, You have heard that the law says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. And he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. That's Matthew 5, 43 to 45, New Living Translation. Did you notice something there? <laughs> the preachers in Christ's time had added something to what God actually said in the Old Testament. Do you remember? What God said through Moses was, love your neighbor as yourself. These people had added, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. Why? Because that suits us. <laughs> With the nature of sin comes wickedness. That suits us. And I'll tell you this, emotions sell. Emotions say, ask anyone who is good with selling. When you are lying with people's sentiments, they patronize you. The preachers of Jesus' day were doing that. They know people want to hate their enemies. <laughs> So Jesus said, you've heard that it has been said this way. I am saying to you, cut away that hate your enemies. He said, in fact, love your enemies. Right? Mm -hmm. When you value your sentiments over what God said, Satan is going to take advantage of your prejudice 
and it's going to make you to do things that will shock people. In fact, that may shock even you when your emotions have now calmed down. Pay attention to what I'm saying. When you value your sentiments over what God said, in other words, you're feeling strong about something, you remember what God said, right? You, you hate your enemy and you feel like killing someone. You remember what God said, forgive, okay? Love your enemies. If you value your emotions at that point in time, over what God said, Satan is there. He will take advantage of it, honestly, and make you do things that will shock people, that will be seemingly out of character. Several years ago, you know, I, I was studying on the Rwandan genocide. 800,000 people killed, tribe against tribe, right? But I'll tell you what shocked me the most. The role of pastors, preachers, or preachers that fueled it because they had programs on the media, fueled it on the radio, and there were some that participated actively in the killing of people. Google it <laughs> if you want to be very sure about it, right? Catholic, Pentecostal, some of them are in jail now. One of them was arrested 16 years after the genocide. They said they dug up 2,000 dead bodies, about 2,000 dead bodies near his church. So I'm saying here, this thing has no boundaries. This prejudice issue, okay? And I'm drawing our attention to it. Don't react to evil. Respond. People can do whatever it is they want to do. They can say whatever it is they want to say. You have that fraction of a second to remember what God said and to choose to go God's way. Amen? Be the child of your Father in heaven. I'm saying what Jesus said. Okay? He does not discriminate. Rise above the things that divide people, including religion. Rise above the things that divide people. In God's eyes, we are all the same. The days ahead are going to be sensitive for Nigeria. That's why I'm speaking. They will hold the potential for crisis and for breakthrough at the same time. And we are the ones that will decide where things will go. Those of us that align with the values of Christ will give God the opportunity to work a miracle in the development of our country. I ask you to please hold on to the long-term vision of a developed Nigeria. And honestly, that's also the vision for a developed Africa. Hold on to that vision. Follow God's instructions to you as a person. Okay, in the midst of all the chaos, God will speak to you. Follow God's instructions to you. And I pray that with time, God will help us to achieve that vision for development in Jesus' name. Please, if you believe it, say amen with me. Good. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that in the midst of all the chaos, no evil will befall you. No plague will come near your dwelling. The blood of Christ will brand you. Every form of evil and violence that sees you will pass over you in Jesus' name. Please say good amen again. Amen. amen. All right. <laughs> First part, done. So let's go to our series of teachings for this month, the ultimate capital. Genesis 1, 28 and 29, New Living Translation. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, Look, I have given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. So this is the ultimate capital number four. Sweet Holy Spirit, I ask that you inspire me in the few minutes that I have to get across this message for the transformation of someone's life. In Jesus' name. All right, our theme for the month has been financial increase. Honestly, we've seen the lives of thousands of people change in this time. If it's a matter of finances, when it comes to the finances. 
And what we've been saying all through this series is the fact that the ultimate capital is the word of God. The basic resource God used to create our world is revelation. Pay attention to it. So even without material resources, you can still be rich when you have revelation because revelation is a convertible resource. <laughs> Please, pay attention to the revelations God has given us as a church, right? Pay attention. Even if you don't attend our church, please come and peep in and find out what it is that God said to us along the line. They're there in our messages, okay? They're there in our messages. Ah, there's power in revelation, honestly. There's power in revelation. In God's head, it's creative power. At some point, I knew I needed a shift in life. You know what I began to do? I'll just send my personal assistant to the Living Faith Church, and he would get Bishop Oedipus cassettes then, cassettes, right? <laughs> Maybe the last two months or three months, and I just, I just listened to them continuously. Why? Because the words in there were inspired. Revelation, okay? Revelation. Someone came, you, you know, I've had this from more than one person, but someone came all the way from North America, you know, we chatted for a few minutes, and he just packed, packed the CDs, right? Maybe about 200 or so. Went to listen and experience an explosion in what he's doing. There is power in revelation. God does not discriminate. So I'm saying, pay attention to those messages. Get them. Listen to them over and over again. Pay attention to the books. Get them. Because what we have in there are revelation. And some of them are like small size, but explosive, right? <laughs> All right. Please also take our schools seriously. I spoke about the Daystar Leadership Academy earlier. The Daystar Business Academy. Daystar Business Academy. Take that school seriously. The Daystar Business Academy. You know why? I got revelations from God. I ran what I call the entrepreneurial class on Sunday mornings some 20 years ago, right? And there are people who were here and the revelation has produced fruit for them, honestly. I'm talking about millionaires and billionaires and they are the ones that take the classes at the Daystar Business Academy. Please don't joke. Join our Daystar Business community, okay? So that you can associate with people that trade in revelation. Amen. Oh, there's the Daystar Skill Acquisition Program. That one will make it practical. From fashion designing to a bakery, to baking, you know, to website designing. And so we actually teach practical schools. Isn't that amazing? Thank you, Jesus. All right. So the common thread through our teachings this month is that revelation is the basic resource for creating wealth in God's system. And we said something very interesting, right? And the first thing revelation will do is to change your identity, change you before it will change your circumstances. I love it. Let me give you a verse that supports that. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9, New Living Translation. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. Wow. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. We call this the work of substitution. The wages of sin is death. So Christ went to the cross to die. When he solved the sin problem, he solved, he also resolved the consequences of sin and poverty, being one of them. So the Bible is saying here, you know, what he did on the cross was the work of grace, right? <laughs> Gave us righteousness, that sinlessness, being right with God as a free gift. Ooh, thank you, Lord. You know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. When did he become poor? On the cross. 
so that by his poverty, he could make you rich. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, three pieces of advice today. Quickly, number one, approach money from a place of rest. Approach money from a place of rest. Stop struggling to be rich. Why? You are rich already. <laughs> you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept forgiveness from God. He's taking your place. So now you take his place, right? Should I read that verse again? Though he was rich yet for your sakes, he became poor, so that by his poverty he could make you rich. Fix your mind on the cross and the work of substitution that happened there. Anytime poverty wants to latch onto you, remember the cross. Why? Because there, Christ carried the poverty. It was, it was exchanged. It is an irreversible fact of history. You're not poor. You're rich already. <laughs> and we said, being rich is a mindset to a large extent. Being poor is a mindset. Rich people just believe. You know, you just know that they are rich. Poor people just believe that they are poor. You see why this is risky business for the average person raised in Africa? Why? Because most people are raised in poor homes. So they grow up believing that they're poor. That is the poverty. Transgenerational, at a cultural level. Kill it. Once you've accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, accepted the sacrifice he made on the cross, change that label. Change that mindset. Woo! Don't approach money with fear and anxiety. If you were doing that before, because that's the cultural problem with poverty, shake it off. Stop approaching money with fear and with anxiety. Approach it with faith. Absolute trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ on your behalf on the cross. Come into a state of rest. Then act from that state of rest. <laughs> You know, I've said before how uh, I was in a conversation with someone and then, you know, I just used the word poor me. No, 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 no. What did I say? I, I used the word, don't mind those rich people. Afterwards, in my quiet moment, the Holy Spirit just brought that conversation back, said, what did you call yourself the other time? You said those rich people. So who are you? Are you those poor people? He said, it's your mouth. It's your, with your mouth. You are shaping your destiny. I said, what? I said, never. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I began to tell people publicly, anywhere you hear them discussing about those rich people, they're talking about us. I wasn't talking about money in the account. I was talking about revelation in the spirits. I put this money thing from a state of rest. You are rich already. Amen. Believing that you are poor messes with your brain and blocks the capacity to actually even capture or receive inspired ideas that can bring the world into your life. Don't be desperate for money. 1 Timothy 6, verses 9 and 10, New Living Translation. 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So many things people are doing today. Crazy things. Just in order to be able to make some bucks. Cultivate your relationship with God. Come on. Be diligent in prayer. And prayer is just fellowship with God, right? Put yourself in a state where you can hear from God. That's what we're talking about. He's going to show you things. <laughs> And when he gives you revelation, the revelation will give you rest because he knows the end from the beginning. Thank you, Jesus. Recently, I, I committed to a media project. And as I was praying for the provision, you know, <laughs> as I was praying about, you know, asking the Holy Spirit how the money will come, he just took me back to the beginning. So, reminded me of the vision he gave me in 1994 and showed me the, the vision I was going to rest principally on the, on the media. That's why I went on radio, you know, February 1995. 
So he asked me, how much did you have when you went on radio? So he said, you better move ahead. Provision was made for that vision. You see, vision is the key to provision. And until you take action, you may not even see the money. I said, thank you. I signed the contract and moved ahead. Why? That vision, one vision had in it what became two organizations, both founded in 1995, Success Power, Early Path, uh, they start the later part. 29 years ago, Revelation got in about 29 years ago, July 1994. And, and when I look back now, that revelation has attracted resources, tens of billions of naira. One revelation. So he's just track back, just track back. It's the revelation, right? So please invest, be diligent when it comes to your relationship with God and hearing from God. Approach this thing from a state of rest. Amen? Good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I remember 2010, I was in the UK, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me, you know, and said, it's time for this to go global. I thought, okay. And ordinarily, you would think, hmm, okay, spread. He said, no, the media. The media, the media, he said, <laughs> you will reach far more people than if you were organizing physically. He said, okay. I came back from the UK. We dissolved our media com department completely, brought in a consultant, upgraded. And as soon, you know, as we were done with the initial upgrading, a friend just came from the US, preached on a Wednesday. And as we were chatting in my office, he said, Pastor Sam, you have a powerful ministry. Do you have plans to go global? You know, with your ministry. I said, that's exactly what God is talking to me about now. That's what we're acting on. He said, don't worry. <clears throat> on my way to the U.S. tomorrow, I'm going through the U.K. I'll speak to Stuart. So a few days later, the Stuart called me. <laughs> the man called Stuart called me. The rest, as they say, is history. In a matter of weeks, we were on a channel in the U.S. World Network, covered many countries. And then a few months down the line, we were on Daystar TV, right? Covering almost every single country in the world with the messages preached in Daystar. And we were told that we were the first ministry based in Africa to get on Daystar TV. The revelations are approached from the state of rest. What we should, don't chase money. Chase revelation, right? Because revelation will give you faith and it will put your heart at rest. The grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of our God abides forever. Any circumstance in your life that is contrary to that word, it is the circumstance that will go the word of God must come to pass. If you believe that, say amen. amen. All right. My second point today, quickly. Leverage money for influence. Let me speak to what to do with the money, right? God's ultimate agenda is for you to influence our earth, our planet positively. Remember Genesis 1.26, let us make man in our own image. After our own likeness, let them do what? Have dominion, have influence, positive influence for God on the earth. This is very important. That's why Ephesians 4.28, New Living Translation, says when you become a Christian, you become a member of God's family, your approach to money must be different. Ephesians 4.28, New Living Translation, if you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then do what? Give generously to others in need. Did you see that? Use your money for positive influence. It's not only for eating. God will give you more than you need to eat. Use your money for positive influence. Use it to meet needs. Use it to solve problems. And when you solve problems for people, you buy influence. You get influence with them. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, the church was exploding. But people were selling their hands, bringing their money, and they were feeding people that did not have food to eat. Come on. Leverage your money to get positive influence in the world. Learn contentment. Separate your needs from your wants. How much will you eat? These days, I speak to people in my age group. Now we're wealthy, right? <laughs> now we can afford to eat anything we want to eat. Sadly, it is now that they are telling us to be careful what we eat. 
there's too much cholesterol, there's too much carbohydrate, there's too much this one. Isn't that amazing? This life is interesting. Just when we cannot afford to eat anything, how much do you need to eat really? So anything God gives you beyond what you need is for influence, is for touching people's lives positively. Amen. Oh, you want to enjoy houses? Build three or four in the same city. Find houses. Beautiful. And make sure you sleep in the three or four in the same night. God bless you. No be crazy with that. <laughs> Let me speak PG. Right? First Timothy 6, 6 to 8, New Living Translation. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and, when we, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if you have enough food and clothing, let us be what? Content. Break free from greed. Have, have, have. Keep, keep, keep. Continue to grow in wealth so you can grow in capacity to do good. I'm just saying not giving at all is a big problem. 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19. New Living Translation. 1 Timothy 6, 17 to 19. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who gives richly, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience through life. The third point, quickly, value collective wealth. Value collective wealth. At the end of the day, we can't beat what God said. It is not good for man to be alone. You acquire all the wealth alone. Everybody else around is poor. You will not be safe with the money. You won't be able to enjoy it. You will spend a good chunk of it protecting yourself. So value collective wealth. And when you do, you will do what? You will pay taxes. Because that's for us to pull our funds together to leverage. How many roads will you build only for yourself, right? Will you, how many airports will you build only for yourself? <laughs> you know? So value collective wealth. Pay taxes. Hmm? That's in Romans 13, uh, verses 6 and 7. When you get home, please read that. Romans 13, 6 and 7. Pay taxes. That's the purpose of government. That's what it says there. But the second thing I will say, you need to influence politics and policy. So when we talk about collective wealth, then of course we, will, we need to appoint or choose or elect the managers that will help us to manage the collective wealth, right? Romans 13. Romans 13, verses 1 to 4. Everyone must submit to governing authorities. All authority comes from God, and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. When you read home, get home, read the remaining verses. That verse alone, verse 1, captures what I have in mind. <laughs> Government has been appointed by God, and God has asked everybody to submit to government, including the church. That's remarkable, isn't it? So you can sit down and not influence who gets there and what they do. I hope you get what I'm saying. In verse 4 there, the government official is referred to as the servant of God. So that speaks to the quality of people that should be there, right? People with godly values and with competence, okay? So when you get involved in that, just know it's not only about you, you're actually making the world better for everybody else. In fact, you should go there, <laughs> right? Some of us are called to function in that space. Go there. It's absolutely important, right? We're discussing about finances, but I'm just saying, okay, when you come to the point where you actually have the resources, right? All of us have, right? What you, what you do with small money is what you will do with big money, right? Yeah. So let your money have a purpose. Let it contribute to the improvement of the quality of everybody's life. Don't forget, many of the systems in our world are mammon-driven. 
Jesus said you cannot serve God and mammon. This is important. When money overrides everything else in your making of decisions, and especially if you then sacrifice people's lives to make money, there's a big problem. You are either a money worshiper or a God worshiper. So we've got to insist that we're going to serve God with our money. So I'm then asking myself, ah, so why are we running through a series like this now? It's our much fruit season. Remember, God promised us miraculous fruitfulness. Something is about to break. Something is about to give. I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus Christ. What heaven has provided for you will show up in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Revelation is the ultimate capital. I pray in Jesus' name, God will open your eyes. You will see things you've never seen before. You will hear things you never had before. In the name of Jesus. Enjoy favor you've never enjoyed before. Receive opportunities you never had before. And it won't come by struggling. It will be easy. If you believe that, say a good amen. I pray for the person that is a part of this service who says, Pastor, my relationship with God is not okay. So how do I even get revelation? Jesus died on the cross. That's what we said during the message, right? And if you just know your relationship with God is not okay, let's pray and receive forgiveness from him right now. Can you put your hand on your heart? All right, say this prayer after me. Wherever you may be, right in any service, at home, Anywhere, online, can you put your hand on your heart? Say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, let the power of the Holy Spirit touch everyone that is a part of this service and everyone who just said that prayer. We know their sins are forgiven right now. And Father, we thank you for the miracle of removing the nature of sin from them and putting your own nature in them. We're grateful for this miracle of changing their lives. Give them new testimonies. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Congratulations if you said that prayer. Woo, thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. If you're at any of our physical locations, we gave you a card while we were praying. Please fill it with accurate information right now. Just leave it on your seat when we close the service. We have very important information to send to you about this decision. God bless you in Jesus' name. If you're online, there's a link in the chat room right now, social media, right? Click on it. Give us your information. We'll send what we have to you via email. If you're on TV, there's a link there on the screen. Copy it right away or snap it and go online. Give us your information. God bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, let's do it. We give. We've spoken about that. When, when we give... <laughs> The heavens open. Revelation comes to us. What God gives us is more than money. Revelation. It's time for us to give and we're going to display the information right now. We give electronically in this time, most of us. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. As we give today, we give because we love you. You loved us. You gave only your own son. There's nothing we can give. And I'm asking, Heavenly Father, that you teach us to give. So, Father, teach each person what to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We can't be stingy with you. And Heavenly Father, as what we have flows to you, let what you have flow to us. This week, we receive safety for our journeys, safety for our families, perfect health, peace of mind, supernatural joy, good news in Jesus' name. Someone say a good amen. Amen. All right, in Jesus' name, the next time you show up at the service, I prophesy, you will have a powerful testimony to share in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you put your hands together and let's appreciate God for that solid word from our pastor. Amen. All right, ladies, something huge is coming in April. Yeah, you can clap in anticipation. <laughs> All right, like, can we see, can we see the video, please? Women of Destiny Conference is back. Join us on April 15th and 16th, 2023 at Daystar Christian Center, Plot A3C, Ecosi Road, for two days of empowerment 
inspiration and transformation. You will be equipped and empowered by Pastor Nike Adeyemi and other inspiring speakers as you connect with like-minded women. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. WOD Conference 2023, this is a game changer. So I'm sure you can clap better now. <laughs> promises to be an awesome time here. Uh, the last edition was in 2019. This one promises to be wonderful. So all the ladies in the house, this is a special invitation to you to be a part of this conference. It was scheduled for first and second initially, but we had to move it to 15th and 16th, Saturday 15th, 11 a.m., and then all services um, on Sunday the 16th. Uh, as our senior pastor, Pastor Nick Adeyemi, will be with us live, ministering among, alongside other inspiring ministers of God's word. Amen. All right, so please block the dates. Um, follow us on all our social media handles. Help us to amplify uh, the, the invites. Uh, invite your friends, invite your family, and let's, let's, let's let God impact people um, in this conference. God bless you as you do this in Jesus' precious name. Okay, so let me say to the lady next, sitting next to you, this is for you. All right, so you make sure that you show up. All right, now uh, this Wednesday promises to be an exciting time. Our senior pastor will be with us in the midweek service. Um, it's also a communion service. Uh, don't mix it up with the in-person one. In-person midweek service starts first Wednesday in April. This one is still virtual. <laughs> But our senior pastor will be with us leading the service and will lead us in, in the communion. So it promises to be an exciting time. All right. Um, can you please turn on the lights? Yes. Uh, we inducted some new members into the worship team. Um, so they are here ministering alongside veterans. So if it's your first time ministering, Can you show by a wave of it? <laughs> please put your hands together for them. All right, please welcome with me the best choir in the world, the Healing Streams of God. Come on, they some mega stars and superstars of Revelation Chasers. Word. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we are heirs of Abraham. And the promise says, I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. How many blessings we have in the house this morning? Come on. We just want to encourage you. And the scripture says that Abraham stepped out in faith and obeyed God's word, not knowing where he was going. Are you ready to obey God's word this week?
Hallelujah to Jesus. The scripture says that the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. And yea, I have a goodly heritage. If you know you have a goodly heritage, stand to your feet and say, I have a goodly heritage. Turn to the person beside you and say, take your inheritance. And church, please join me to celebrate this award-winning choir for that powerful, powerful ministrations. And on this beautiful note, we've come to the end of this service. But before we go, we would like to once again acknowledge the presence of those who are worshipping with us for the very first time. We did welcome our guests earlier in the service, but in case you are not sitting when that was done, we just want to let you know that we love you and we do not take your coming for granted. So please stop by at our affirmation center, which is to your right, as you approach the final exit from this premises. Our officials will be delighted to hand over to you a welcome pack. Feel free to ask them questions about our church and especially about the fellowship system. And we trust God that as you come again and again, God will make you the next room model in town in Jesus' name. And to our guests online, I want to say a big thank you to you for choosing this Star Christian Center among all the other options that you have. In, uh, uh, in that chat box, our host have dropped a link. You can please click that link and furnish us details about yourself. And we strongly believe that God Almighty will continue to bless you and your story will be from glory to glory and from grace to grace in the mighty name of Jesus. As you go this week, I pray that the mercies of God will locate you in Jesus' name. You will encounter grace and it shall be well with you. And when next you are coming, it shall be with your testimony. See you at the own fellowship. All right, you're welcome back. This has been a fantastic service. Well, you need to see the cameraman jumping from left to right to make sure that this came out really good yeah it is a fantastic day here in lagos and we're so happy that you know the second service is over but we just want to do a quick recap of what we had and that is um number one stop struggling i'll still bring in kemi um stop struggling to be rich you are rich already second one says learn contentment and the third one says value collective wealth well, I have with me to wrap up today, Kemi. How are you, Kemi? I'm good, Tyler. How, how are you too? It was good. It was really insightful. All right. Well, can you just um, take us through what Pastor, um, you know, told us today? Okay. Uh, um, he said that we should learn to approach um, wealth from a place of rest. And that says to me that if you stay with the word, which is our first thing for the year, if you stay with the word, you study the word, and you allow God actually speak to you revelation will come to you Absolutely. which will also lead into a place of rest so mm. while others are worried while others are wor wondering where when it will happen or how wealth will come to them mm. god is leading you because you have revelation you're just staying put and trusting god that he will actually bring wealth to you it is also profound to know that uh, the foundational word here is revelation you yeah. know a lot of people jump around just do every other thing but gets revelation for their lives yes. you know and that is where we are different as christians you know your the re revelation you get for your life might not necessarily be the revelation another person gets for his life yes. and this is where you know the crave for wealth that desire to just get wealth at all costs you know comes to play you know and you know if you really understand what the wealth is just like pastor sam said it's not meant for you alone yeah as much as you're able to satisfy your basic needs you know other people really really will be in a position to be to benefit from yes, what you have and that is actually influence you know? yes it, it actually brings brings me to that point where it says value collective wealth i see that a lot of people are after their own there's a lot of selfishness going around like people just want to make wealth for themselves and they don't care what happens to the other person but it says mm -hmm. that when you value collective wealth we're all we're trying to ensure that everyone gets a piece of it and then we're willing to give back to the society Absolutely. so that we all grow Absolutely. in wealth yeah well um this is the last sunday we're having this um yes, particular this series thing, i mean yeah. it's over this sunday by um wednesday we're doing we're going to do we're a, wrap a, a wrap up on that and you know um it's been a fantastic three four weeks of this discussion yes. and i'm so happy again that wednesday service is coming is co back as yes. a live you know <laughs> in the main auditorium it's coming back live in april i just want to say 
you know from here we really appreciate you joining us for the service and we pray that as you go into this week it's going to be indeed a fantastic week for you and you will multiply in all facets in the mighty name of jesus lines of all to you in pleasant places in the mighty name of jesus last word kemi please do not forget to join us on wednesday for the communion service pastor sam will be live with us so come and be blessed and do not forget to invite someone absolutely invite someone and you know by so doing you are blessing somebody's life my name is tayo and she is kemi and we say bye for now and see you for the third service is coming on in the next few minutes just stay by bye for now I wake up with a smile each day Positive for my mindset, don't oh no. Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way And I'm good that there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Good that there for one another But this is the journey we take Just say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you And I go that there for you, my sister You no need to shake We go that there for one another For this journey we did I go there for you You go there for me We are a family, always there for one another. Join us. D-Star, Raising Role Models.